G'day, how's it going? Hopefully, if you're unsure about what mite treatment to put in your hives, this video will help you to understand the choices better. Varroa mites are the biggest problem facing beekeepers around the world. They are on bees, in the brood, they do damage to the bees, they spread viruses, and they kill hives. If you're walking into a bee supply shop or looking online to try and choose a mite control to put into your hives, it can be really, really confusing. There are lots and lots of different brands and just looking at the names of them doesn't tell you much about what they do, how they work, and whether they're the right choice for you to use in your hive. This video is not a comparison of different treatments. I'm not going to say this treatment's better than that treatment for a couple of reasons. They've all been tested. In my view, there's strong evidence that they all work and many of them are made by big corporate companies who would be quite happy to sue a little guy like me if I expressed an opinion that they didn't agree with. Nevertheless, I should, in this video, be able to give you enough information to make an informed choice. If you look at my other videos, you'll see how I do it. And that's not a recommendation to you, that's simply me saying this is what I do. When I did a quick review of the online bee supply stores in New Zealand, I could find eight different varieties or brands of varroa treatments. Of course, there might be others that I've missed. I didn't see any in any of the major bee supply stores. You can divide mite treatments into two broad categories, synthetic and the word we use to describe the others varies. Uh, some people call them natural, organic, uh, I prefer non-synthetic because at the end of the day they're all chemicals. Although there are eight major types available in New Zealand, when we divide them up by active ingredient you can see that actually there are only six active ingredients because some of these products use the same active ingredient as each other. There's a wide range of application methods for treating mites. Some, some brands use strips, others use vaporization, people often drizzle some of the products into hives, and others get applied with powders sitting in little trays in the hive. So how are you going to choose which application suits you? A lot of it comes down to personal preference, but there are some specific things which will dictate what you can choose and what you can't choose. It will depend on the scale of your operation, the time of year, and most importantly, what treatments you've used in the past. Because what you don't want to do with some treatments is use the same brand over and over, treatment after treatment, year after year. Because resistance to mite treatments is a big problem and a growing problem around the world and the best way to create treatment resistant mites is to use the same product over and over and over and over. Now that comment relates specifically to the synthetic mite treatments. I'm not that familiar with thymol and formic acid, but I do know that with oxalic acid there's no evidence that there is a mite resistance problem and that's partly because, even though we don't understand how oxalic acid kills mites, what we do know is that it, however it does it, it seems to be a physical method and, and mites can't become resistant to physical destruction of their bodies. That's the current thinking. Watch the space. Who knows? Over time, some form of resistance may develop. As far as I'm aware, it hasn't yet. So a good strategy for choosing and applying mite treatments in your hive is to identify the active ingredients that are in the options you have and ensure that you alternate or rotate the use of active ingredients so that the uh, likelihood of resistant mites developing 
is reduced as much as is possible. A critical element in the use of any mite treatment is going in parallel with it a testing regime where you're keeping track of the mite levels in your hives. The best practice is to test your hives for mite levels before you treat and then again seven or eight weeks later to see if the treatment worked. Why do you do that? Well there are a number of reasons why treatments fail. You might have a dud batch of the chemical. It might be past its expiry date and you haven't noticed it. It might be that there was a glitch in the factory. Whatever the case, I have seen every different kind of mite treatment fail at some time or other. Whatever you do, don't just treat your hives and then say, I've treated them, therefore they don't have mites. If you treat again after seven or eight weeks and discover that the mite levels are still too high, you will have to treat again. That's particularly important in hives that have a high mite level to start with. So when you have a, a hive with a really high mite level, even if you get a 95% knockdown of the mites that are in the hive from your treatment, the residual mite level might still be too high going into the winter and you might need to repeat the treatment, preferably with a different treatment, to bring the levels down to an acceptable level going into the winter. And I'm talking very low levels. Nought to one mite per 100 bees. Another reason for testing and retesting is that your hives can get reinfested. So even if the mite treatment you used was totally effective, within a matter of weeks or months after you've treated, the mite levels can be back up again because uh, there might be a what we describe as a mite bomb in the area. That's a hive that's got really high mite levels and, and due to drift, those mites are migrating into your other hives. You might have some friendly neighbors that think that going treatment free is a great idea and they haven't yet discovered that their hives are all gonna die. So in the meantime, they are being great neighbors and sharing their mites with you and your bees. And of course, there might be feral colonies in trees in your area that haven't died out because of the mites yet, and in the meantime, they're spreading mites around your area. How would mites get from those colonies into your hives? Well, bees are great at robbing out colonies that are weak. And so a classic situation is where there's a feral colony in your area, it's dying out because it's got a, it hasn't been treated and it's got a heavy mite infestation, and your bees go and find some free honey gather it up and bring it back to the hive. Unfortunately, as they come back to the hive, they're not just bringing honey. They're also bringing their fair share of the mites out of that dying hive. All right, you've tested your hives. You're ready to put your treatments in. What's the first thing you should do? And the answer is read the instructions. I'm deliberately not going into the different way that the different brands are used in hives because to do that in a video like this would stretch it out to be a two hour long video which you're not going to watch. So every time you use a new brand of mite treatment, read the instructions carefully because the instructions tell you how many strips to put in the hive, where to put the strips in the hive, and when to put the strips in the hive, and when to take the strips out. That last point's especially important for synthetic strips because if you leave a synthetic strip in a hive longer than it should be there, its effectiveness, the level of the chemical that it's emitting, reduces down and down and down, and eventually, if you don't take that strip out, it will reach the point where the dose that the mites are being exposed to is what we refer to as a sub-lethal dose. In other words, they get sick, but they don't die. That is what will trigger resistant mites faster than anything, because those mites get a taste of the chemical, they don't die, and they build up a resistance. A bit like being vaccinated. Although I'm sure from a scientific point of view, it's nothing like being vaccinated. So I've told you a bit about treating mites and choosing mite treatments, but I haven't told you 
go and pick this treatment and use it. You've still got a lot of work to do to make up your own mind as to what it is that's the best fit for your operation and for your hives and what you're comfortable with. I'm not going to tell you how to do that. I'm going to leave that up to you. That's part of the joy of beekeeping is making those decisions for yourself. There is, however, one last pointer that I would give you. If you're using synthetic strips in brood boxes in your hives, you need to label those brood boxes as brood boxes and only ever use those boxes and those frames as brood boxes. Never ever take an empty brood box and use it as a honey super at some time in the future. Why? Because there's a possibility that there are residue of the treatments you've used in that box and that that residue could end up in the honey. As a rule of thumb, if you're using a synthetic treatment, you can't put the treatment into the hive while you have honey supers on and your hives are collecting honey. It is all right though, although sometimes not recommended, to have the four non-synthetic treatments that I mentioned earlier in the video in your hive during the honey flow. So it's quite possible this video has left you with more questions than answers, but that's as much information as you need to go and do your own research and make your own decision. Good luck with that and thanks for watching. Since we're talking about mite treatments, I thought I would just add a little clip onto the end of this video, which uh, I happened across on YouTube. I've unashamedly stolen this footage from In The Hive TV, which is a YouTube channel, and hopefully they won't mind too much. I've edited it down to just some highlights, but I thought you might be interested in some technology that exists and might turn up and become available to us at some time in the future. Thanks for watching. The device can automatically deliver a minimum amount of any chemical, synthetic or natural, to the hive homogeneously at a specific time of the day, several days a week, without the need to open the hive. The device has many potential benefits. It uses a new delivery method that uses small gas pulses, ensuring a homogeneous spread of the compound, treating the mites throughout the respiratory system rather than contact. The device allows a 90% reduction in chemical use in the hive. It supports a variety of compounds. The current treatment is amitrax based with the ability to use fluvalinate and thymol in the near future. It reduces labor for beekeepers, dramatically reducing operation costs, it causes less disturbance to the colony with fewer visits. The device can monitor your hive 24-7 with sensors and not only inform you about each colony's status, but also can do something about it. A total of 1,200 colonies was used in this study. Looking at this data, Hive Master Group, using 90% less Amy tracks, was able to beat even the protocol used by experienced commercial beekeepers in Israel. Hive master colonies have more frames of bees as you can see here. Hive master colonies have less overwinter mortality as you can see in this graph. Hive master colonies have more honey as you can see this one and more. Mm -hmm.